Hello and welcome everyone. In today's video, we'll be talking about Galileo Galilei and the persecution he faced at the hands of the Catholic Church. Why was Galileo tried by the Catholic Church and what was his crime? Was he accused of heresy? And if so, was he really a heretic? And if Galileo wasn't a heretic, then who was? Answer to these questions and more coming up in this video. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell if you want to see more videos in which we continue to examine the topics of science and religion. We've already talked about Giordano Bruno, the philosopher burned at the stake by the Catholic Church for his beliefs and his arguments that caused an uproar with the Catholic Church. But now we'll move on to Galileo Galilei and his fate at the hands of this religious authority. Galileo, who was born in 1564 and died in 1642, was an Italian natural philosopher, astronomer, and mathematician, and was very respected in his community. He was also a member of the Catholic Church. Early on in his life, he considered joining the priesthood, but his father wanted him to study medicine which he did at first, but eventually, with his father's permission, he studied mathematics and natural philosophy. Now, natural philosophy, as its name implies, is the physical study of nature and the physical universe. Galileo was instrumental in changing the way we view our world and the way we study the world around us from a philosophical study or a qualitative one to a quantitative study that involved experimentation and the use of the scientific method. One of Galileo's contributions included improving upon the telescope. In his time, telescopes were used primarily to look out at sea, but in 1609, he made a telescope for observing the sky. What he discovered through his observation of the stars, planets, and the moons of planets is that Earth orbits the sun. This went against the prevailing theory of the church at the time which was the geocentric theory, stating that the sun and all the planets orbit the earth. Interestingly, the Jesuit priests, who were also astronomers, confirmed everything that Galileo was observing through the telescope. Despite this, the Copernican theory of heliocentrism, with the sun in the center, not the earth, which Galileo advocated based on observations, was considered to be in opposition to the Bible by the Catholic Church. This opposition arose from certain biblical references such as Psalm 93.1, 96.10, and 1 Chronicles 16.30, as well as other verses, specifically the text within these verses stating that the world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. It was also based on Ecclesiastes 1.5, which states, the sun rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rises. Another biblical verse is Psalm 104.5, which states, He, the Lord, set the earth on his foundation so that it should never be moved. All of these verses were interpreted by the Catholic Church to mean that the earth was the center of the universe. Now, Galileo did not believe that his findings and his supporting the heliocentric theory contradicted the Bible. But there were those who thought otherwise, and they submitted his works to the Roman Inquisition. Around the same time, the Copernican theory, or heliocentric theory, was also being seriously challenged by the Church, much more so than it had been in the past. The works of Copernicus were deemed heretical and thus banned. In February 1616, heliocentrism was declared by the Inquisitional Commission to be foolish and absurd in philosophy, and formally heretical, since it explicitly contradicts in many places, the sense of the Holy Scripture. The Inquisition also found the concept of Earth's movement to be erroneous in faith. Pope Paul V instructed Cardinal Bellarmine, who, if you'll recall, was involved in the persecution of Giordano Bruno, to deliver the verdict to Galileo and to order him to abandon the opinion that heliocentrism was physically true. So Galileo was ordered to abandon completely the opinion that the sun stands still at the center of the world and the earth moves and henceforth 
not to hold, teach, or defend it in any way, whatever, either orally or in writing. So the book of Copernicus on heliocentrism was banned, and Galileo remained silent for a decade. But then, in 1632, he published a book on the subject called Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems. Prior to its publication, Galileo had been asked not to advocate heliocentrism by the reigning Pope Urban VIII, but Galileo did not comply. This book demonstrated his support of the Copernican theory. Moreover, Pope Urban VIII took offense to the character in Galileo's book named Simplicius, which also means simpleton in Italian. The character Simplicio was essentially a simpleton who supported the Aristotelian geocentric view and made statements that the Pope himself had made in his defense of the idea that the sun and planets revolve around the earth. Most historians agree that Galileo did not expect such a reaction to his book. Nevertheless, Galileo faced the Inquisition once again and was tried and found vehemently suspect of heresy for his belief that the earth was not at the center of the universe and that it moves. He was required to abjure, curse, and detest his belief. He was initially sentenced to formal imprisonment, then to house arrest. His books were banned. Publication of any of his work was forbidden, and he was not allowed to teach or lecture. He died in his home, persecuted by the men of religion, the ones who said that earth never rotates or revolves around the sun. The Catholic Church officially apologized for what they had done to Galileo, but only hundreds of years after his death and after it was clear to everyone that the earth orbits the sun. So we ask again, who was the real heretic? As we can see, Galileo stood by his beliefs and his conclusions based on scientific observation until he was punished, condemned, and silenced by the men of religion. But it went even further to the point where he was forced to recant or would face punishment. And his observations were correct. So what do we call this? And what does this say about these men of religion and following them blindly and without question? We'll look at more examples of how science is condemned by religious leaders even today as we explore this topic further. I'd like to leave you with some quotes from Galileo as we ask ourselves, are these statements of a heretic? Until next time, please like and subscribe and take care. We hope to see you soon.